Good morning, Miami Whitewater. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. So uh, this morning is a little bit of a pinch hit, and I will ask you to bear with us. Pastor Dustin was uh, scheduled to be out on vacation this week, so he's not here. And Cole Freeman, our worship leader, uh, the original plan was for him to preach this morning and fill in for Justin, but um, he and his family are quarantining now due to exposure to COVID. So we have virtual Cole here with us uh, to lead us in part of the service. And so here is a message from Cole. Hey, Second Service, how you doing? Welcome to Miami Whitewater United Methodist Church. My name is Cole Freeman, and normally I would be leading you in worship today, but um, I, as many of you know, my wife is a nurse, and we had a COVID exposure this week, and she's starting to show some symptoms. We went and got a test today for her, and we'll know the results early in the week. But in the meantime, I just didn't feel comfortable exposing you to that possibility, especially with all that's going on in the world. So I'm recording this message uh, to you very late at night, and um, I'm so excited that you're going to get a, a chance to worship together today. And this is going to be, be part of what we talk about today, is how technology can impact us and help us share the message. But in the meantime, I want you to get up on your feet, because these fine folks right here have some wonderful music prepared for you. I wish I could be a part of it, but I will bring you the message in just a little while. So hang tight. In the meantime, sing, laugh dance and be joyful as we uh, prepare for worship. Well, it's great to be here today under any circumstances. And isn't it wonderful to be in the house of the Lord, be able to worship. So you can stand or you can worship where you are. And we're going to play some music.
alone in my sorrow and dead in my soul. Lost without hope with no place to be. Your love made a way to let mercy come. Displayed on a criminal's cross. Darkness rejoices though heaven had But then Jesus arose with the freedom and That's when death. Oh 
Now is the time when we bring our tithes and offerings. If you are here in person, we have four stations around the sanctuary on the edges. You can take your offering to any of them during this next song. And if you're watching online, you can go to our website at www.mymw.org and you can give there. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, for the chance to come and gather in your house and worship you and hear your word, fellowship with each other. We lift these tithes and offerings up to you. We pray that they will be a cheerful and pleasing aroma to you. In your name, amen. Amen. And now we have, as our offertory this morning, we have a virtual choir, which is something that you uh, may or may not have seen during COVID. It's one of the COVID inventions, but this is a virtual choir that Cole has picked out for this morning.
Amen. That was a really neat thing to see. Okay. Well, how are you kids? How are you this morning, kids? <laughs> well, in a few minutes, we are going to hear Cole talk via video about building relationships and talking to people about how much God loves them. But first, I want to tell you a story from the Bible about two people who really did a very good job with that. And I need your help. So when we are talking to people about what God does in our lives, it's like God is shining a light inside of us, and we are letting them see that light. So when the people in the story do something that shows God's light shining in them, I need you to hold up your light and say with me, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Can you guys try that? This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Good job. Okay. So there were two friends named Paul and Silas, and they traveled all over the country to all these different towns telling people about Jesus and how much God loves them. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. But some people didn't like the things that Paul and Silas were doing and saying. The religious leaders in particular were very upset. They liked things the way it was. They didn't want anything to change. They tried to get Paul and Silas in trouble by saying that they were disturbing the peace or causing riots. They had them arrested and thrown in the deepest, darkest cell of the jail. That wouldn't be very much fun, would it? So, but, and Paul and Silas were even put in chains so they couldn't escape. But Paul and Silas knew the whole time that God was with them and cared about them. And they never forgot about God or let their light stop shining. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Around midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang songs to God while the other prisoners listened. Even in prison, Paul and Silas were telling people about Jesus and letting their light shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Suddenly, there was a big earthquake. Can you help me make some earthquake noises? Good job. Immediately after the earthquake, the doors of the jail flew open, and the prisoners' chains all fell off. So all this noise woke up the jailer. An earthquake would probably wake you up, right? So the jailer woke up, and he's really upset because he knew that he would get in really big trouble if all these prisoners escaped. He was responsible for them. He could lose their job. He might even die if these prisoners escaped. But Paul said, don't worry, we're all here. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. The jailer was so relieved and so happy that he fell down in front of Paul and Silas. They could have run away when they had the chance, but they didn't. They stayed where they were. And surely, the jailer thought, the God they served must be very good. The jailer was so happy, he took Paul and Silas out of the jail. He took them back to his house. He had dinner with them, and he asked them what he could do to be saved and to know this God that they serve. Then they told him about Jesus and how much Jesus loves them. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. The jailer was so happy to know about Jesus. He brought he brought them back to the jail. The people who had arrested them early the day before 
said that they could go home, that they weren't in trouble anymore. So, you know, Paul and Silas left and went about their way. They kept on traveling around the country, telling people about Jesus like they had before. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. So, you know, our lives probably look a lot different than Paul and Silas's lives. You know, we probably won't get thrown in jail for telling people about Jesus. We don't have to worry about that. But, you know, we can still look at their story and we can learn from them about telling people about Jesus. Wherever they went, even when they were in trouble, even when it was hard, they let their light shine. They never stopped telling people about Jesus. And we can do that too when we're at school, with our friends, at recess, playing with our friends in the neighborhood or at home. We can tell people about Jesus wherever we are. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Thank you. And now we have our children. If you would, bow your heads and pray with me, please. Heavenly Father, you are a gracious God, and we seek to be an obedient and responsive church. Help us to clearly discern the way forward as we talk about new technology, as we talk about new generations, and how we can best connect with them, how we can best minister to them, and how we can be a safe haven away from the world and close to you. In your son Jesus' name, amen. Our scripture reading today comes from the New Testament. First, Matthew 22, 37 through 40, which says, Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment, and the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. The next one is John 13, 34, and 35. A new command I give you, love one another, as I have loved you, so must you love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. And the third is from Matthew 28, 19 and 20. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. Surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. These are the words of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. So friends, well, this is the fun of technology. I've already recorded a half an hour sermon and forgot to turn the microphone on. Ah! So, this is the beauty and the fun of technology, and sometimes where the time goes to, too. But, as I said earlier, I felt it was clearly safer for me to quarantine, and to, but since we have the technology to do this, that I could maybe get across my message this way, because when it comes down to it, this is exactly what my message is about, is how, how do we leverage technology? But before we can look at that, I, I want to ask a simple question. What are we doing here? Why do we come to church and gather every Sunday morning? Why do we come to this building? Why, why do we get together with other believers in Christ on a regular basis? Well, I, I really think that it's the answer is in those three scriptures that we just read. Uh, the first one is from when he was asked by 
the religious leaders of the day and the priests about what is the greatest commandments. And, and you see, the question was to try and kind of trip them up, see if they could get him in trouble. But he answers them truly. The number one commandment is to love God with everything you got. And number two follows closely on its heel is to love your neighbor as you love yourself. The, the second scripture comes from a, a much more intimate setting where he's gathered with his disciples the night of his betrayal. They're about to have their last supper. He's washed their feet. They're asking him questions. And then he tells them, I have a new command for you. Love one another. Because that's how they'll know that you are my disciples is from your love. Because Jesus knows that God sent him and that God is love. And that if they're disciples of Jesus, they'll, of course, be loving each other. And the last commandment, to go and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and, and teaching them to observe all the things that Jesus commanded us. So we have these three things, and really when it boils down to it, two things, love, 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 and go and make disciples. And so that, I think, is the core of why we, the purpose behind why we gather together. Now, there's a lot of reasons we gather. I mean, certainly it makes us feel good to see our friends and to gather together and hear some good scripture and some a good message and some upbeat music or, or something that's familiar. There's nothing wrong with that. But we really need to keep our eyes focused on how do we build God's kingdom here? What are the bricks made out of? What foundation stone are we building on? And and so if the words of Christ are the things that we hang ourselves, uh, our mission on, then I would say these are some of the most important ones. And when we look at it, loving each other is obviously most is easiest to do when we're in person. But there is no distance that Jesus prescribes. He doesn't say love one another when you're in eyesight of each other or earsight or any distance whatsoever. He doesn't put any limits on that. And the same goes with go and make disciples of all nations. It's just not practical to walk to all nations or even now that we have airplanes, even to fly to all of them, it's expensive and still takes a long time. But we have this technology called the internet, and we can broadcast a message that literally goes around the world in practically real time. Of course, there's the challenge of getting people to listen to what we have to say, and so that means that we can't be boring. And we can't do the same old thing all the time. Hence, maybe new formats and new ways of doing things. So here, we, we've got some commandments that Jesus gave to us. And so we, we're gathering together. We're loving on each other. And we're do, we do a good job of that. And we're loving on our community. We're, we're reaching out and we're finding ways that we can let our community know that we love them and that they're welcome to engage with us in relationship. But the going and making disciples, that, that's tough unless we look at it in a different way, unless we realize that we don't have to jump on an airplane. We can talk to a camera or we could be on stage and be captured on camera. But one way or another, we have a message that the whole world needs to hear. That God loves you and he sent his only son so that we could be in relationship with him. Jesus took our sin and washed us, cleaned us, made us so that we were like new. 
that's the simple gospel message. So once we figure that out, what do we do with it? Okay, well, here's where we come into some history here. It's pretty recent history. All the way back in March, a certain worship leader that you might know was had his bags packed and ready to go to Florida. And all of a sudden, boom, a coronavirus. We're, we're quarantined. Everything's shut down, including the church service. And so we canceled flights. And I spent about 40, maybe 50 hours learning what is streaming. How do we do that? Do I have the equipment to do that? Oh, you can do that on an iPad or an iPhone. Uh, okay, well, maybe we can figure this out. And voila, our first pre-recorded live stream was born. So we spent several months in quarantine and tried to figure out how do we stay in touch with one another. I learned what a Zoom meeting was, as many of you did too, I'm sure. I learned that you can pray over a Zoom meeting and it's wonderful. I also learned that it's not so great for singing all at the same time because the mic keeps muting. <laughs> but I learned that while online communication is good at some things and isn't so good at other things, it is a powerful tool. And it is a way that we can reach out and, and, and reach into to generations and folks that we haven't traditionally been able to reach. But what it's going to take is us getting out of our comfort zone. I learned something very important is, first of all, you, you can teach an old dog, or at least a middle-aged dog, some new tricks. All you have to do is be willing and, and have a lot of time to look at YouTube videos and scour the internet for answers to questions you might have. But if you have the time and the will, it's achievable. And the same is true of us as a church. If we want to get behind this, if we want to transform ourselves into a church that is not only welcoming in person, but has a, a, a friendly, family friendly, on the corner of the internet kind of church feel to it, we can do that, but it's going to take some effort. It might take a website redesign and some ways of integrating some apps into our website so that people can catch up quickly with what's going on in the life of the church. You know, there's a lot of technology that we still aren't leveraging, and some of it does cost money, but... The beauty of that is, is there's no better return on investment than to save a soul. And if we can reach new generations for that and to bring people to Jesus, well, that's worth all the money in the world, isn't it? So just to kind of fill you in on the state of where we're at right now, uh, back in those days, I was given a pretty limited emergency budget to put together some streaming equipment. And we did that, and that served us for now. Uh, in those first couple of months, I used kind of what I had laying around. But when we were going back to live services, it wasn't adequate for that. I mean, you know, there's only so much zooming you can do on an iPad. So we bought a pro one professional camera and some gadgets to hook that up to the computer. And we started streaming our live services. Now, unfortunately, the transitional period that we thought we were going to have in order to train our volunteers suddenly disappeared when we learned that we could gather in person. So it was a rough transition. Uh, just in the way of numbers, we went from an average of about 2,000 minutes a weekend of engagement, watching time. Uh, let's say an average of about three to 400 people, unique views on our Sunday morning streams. 
and then we came back in person. And while the 50 or 60 or, uh, or so of you that came to the live service did put a dent in our online viewership, we lost more than half of our online viewership that weekend. And it continued to steadily drop. I suspect it's because our production value dropped too. Because our poor volunteers were thrown into having to produce and do things that they weren't adequately trained to do, that we just didn't have the time. And, and you'll notice that over the, the course of the last couple of months, that things have gotten better, uh, sometimes in leaps and bounds, and sometimes there's persistent problems that we still haven't found the answer to. But we're working on it. One of the things that I do want to make you aware is we do have some more equipment coming in. In the next few weeks, hopefully the back orders will clear out and we'll get a second camera and a device to switch between them and a few other things that are going to make life for our volunteers a, a little more comfortable. And we're even applying for uh, something that hopefully we'll get to talk about in a few months. But it would be means some huge changes, at least for our technology and maybe for the looks of the building a little bit. But all of these changes are things that we've determined are necessary. We went through a visioning process with you last year, and we as a church decided that we need to focus on especially parents of 5 to 14 year olds and families. We need to be reaching right across the road. And unfortunately, in this day and age, it's not the most effective to go knock on a door because there's security issues. Because right now, there's a pandemic on. So just knocking on a door doesn't work anymore. But we have this electronic door that we can knock on. And we can find new ways of finding people where they live and how to minister to them, finding ways of advertising our food pantry, of advertising the different small groups that we have that we can connect, of finding ways to make those small groups accessible to those that can't come in person. You know, I had a really exciting conversation the other day I was talking to to one of the ladies that helped organize a, an outing to a assisted care facility in our community. And they delivered some care baskets to the workers there to show them how much we appreciate them. And she wanted to share some pictures for the newsletter. And when we got to talking about it, 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 it hit me like a lightning bolt. This... This technology right here that we're utilizing to be able to take our services and bring it into your home, we can also do that to bring it into their home. And not only that, but we can set up cameras and we can be interactive with folks that are shut away and can't be interactive in any other way. But that's something that we could do if we decide that we want to do it. There's lots of other creative ways that we can leverage this technology to reach out to those who are lonely, who are hurting, who are lost, who are broken, and who need Jesus. I mean, when it comes down to it, this technology is a pain in the neck, right? But it's so worth it because what's a pain in the neck to us comes a second nature to those that are younger and use it all the time. And I think it's worth it to see some new smiling faces, to see some people's lives transformed, to see Jesus baptize them in the spirit and, and turn their lives around. I mean, that's why I gathered together with y'all. I love having my life transformed and I love seeing your life transformed. And whether we do that through a camera and a screen, 
or whether we do that if i was standing living and breathing right in front of you right now it, it would still be the same message it would still be the same amount of love that i have for you and i would still be trying to make disciples of you just like i hope you would be making a disciple out of me i thank you so 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 much for helping out We've got several of the, the string art frames out in the lobby. I hope you've gotten a chance to take a look at them. There's some really neat designs. And eventually, they're going to go on this wall here. Well, maybe it's over here. It's around here somewhere. But they're going to go on the wall in this window that surrounds our cross on the wall. And, and hopefully it'll look like a stained glass window. I can't wait to start wiring up these frames and getting them lit. I think they're going to look great. And just like that project, there are a ton of other projects coming down the pipe. Hopefully, I'll get word early in the week of a negative test, and we'll be off and running. I'm planning on calling a series of work bees on Saturdays or Sunday afternoons, if that's better for the majority. But on a regular basis, if I could get two to four hours every weekend out of even a half a dozen people, we could transform so many things in here. And that's just the start. As I said, I can't really say too much, but there are some plans in the works. And if they come to fruition, if God says yes to them, then there'll be even more transformation. And in a big way, in a wonderful way. And I hope that you'll be a part of it, that when it comes time, that you'll say, yes, I, I wanna do what I can. Because this is the church of full of doers. I've been impressed, even when we're tired, when something needs to get done, you're a group of people that'll get it done. So I just want you to kind of keep your ear to the ground. We'll have a series of trainings coming up. As soon as we get this new equipment in and maybe get a weekend or two under our belt, we'll figure out what we're doing and train other people on how to do that. I know that we're gonna find a way to reach out and reach into the homes of many of the people around this Harrison area. The reason we gather is to make a difference. That's why we gather together. And I hope that you're willing to do that. I hope that you're willing to make a difference. Thanks, friends. Now, if you would, bow your heads. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the fire, for the passion and for the ability to make a difference in people's lives. Help us to capitalize on that. Help us to bring that through and to love our neighbors and love you as best as we can as we strive to go and make disciples of all nations. In your sons, Jesus' name, amen. And we're going to resume with some more music here. This next one may be familiar to you. As always, feel free to sing along.
people said amen. Whoa, ho, ho, and all the people said amen. One announcement before we go. On October 31st, from 1 to 4, that's the last Saturday in October, Halloween afternoon, we will be having a COVID edition of our Harvest Carnival at Harrison Bowl. Um, normally, our Harvest Carnival is one of the biggest events we have for outreach, and we normally had it in the parking lot here at the church. Um, but it's also not a COVID-friendly event to do it the way that we normally have with all the inflatables and carnival games. So this year we're going to do a trunk or treat style where we will have a one-way path through ca the cars for kids to get candy. We will have everyone in masks, people handing out candy will wear gloves. We will ask you to hand the candy to the kids from your basket. We don't want kids reaching their, multiple kids reaching their hands into people's buckets. So we will ask you to hand your candy to the kids and they will open up their bucket and receive it. So we're gonna do this as safe as we can. And, but we do need people to sign up to come park your cars at the bowling alley and bring candy and hand it out. So if you would be willing to do that, there is a sign up in the lobby or you can go to our website and sign up there if you're watching online, mynw.org. And I think this will be a great event to reach out to our community. We chose to do it at the bowling alley because we as a church have the vision to be a greater presence in this community in Harrison. And getting outside of the church property is a great way to do that. So we ask you to join us in that on October 31st. And thank you all for bearing with us today as we scrambled a little bit to, uh, to fill everything and make sure that everything happened as Cole was out at the last minute and we filled in for him. But now go in the light and love of Jesus Christ to boldly make and nurture disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. Thank you. We'll see you next week. <laughs>